You may or may not know that Venezuela stunned <laughs> Brazil in Comer <laughs> qualifying last Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> just in case you were hiding under a rock, I did not hear a late <laughs> across the world. Can I say something to Mario? Vamos <laughs> Venezuela! <laughs> you can say it to Mario, but you can also say it to Gustavo Hoffman as well. Oh, okay. Well, All right. Who is uh, oh, 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 wait a second. Vamos <laughs> Venezuela! Gustavo, you got the George draw today oh, with Ali. Oh, goodness. Well, Welcome back, Gustavo. I'm sure this Good was luck. a Good lovely, luck, warm welcome that you were expecting. <laughs> Tell us, how worried are Brazil fans right now after this result? Hello, Keo. Hello, guys. Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me again. Well, it was a great result for Venezuela, but a bad result for Brazil. And after that, we had many, many, many fans uh, demonstrating their frustration about the result against Venezuela. We have to understand the, the context around that because uh, everybody saw what happened with Neymar after the match when a fan threw uh, a bag of popcorn against on, on into him. And so what happened with Neymar is wrong point. Uh, but we have to understand the context about the relationship uh, between the fans of the Brazilian national team, the Brazilian fans and the Brazilian national team, because the expectation of the Brazilian fans is always the highest possible. The Brazilian fans always want to see a win by three, four or five goals against Venezuela, against Bolivia, against Peru. And when it doesn't happen and it doesn't happen all the time. It didn't happen all the time with Romário and Ronaldo ahead. It didn't happen all the time when we had Socrates, Zico and Falcão in the midfield. It didn't even happen all the time when we had Pelé. So, but the relationship is a little bit complicated between the fans and the Brazilian team. So they always want to see a show from the Brazilian team. And when that doesn't happen, especially in Brazil, that was the case of this match against Venezuela that was was played in Cuiabá. When that doesn't happen, the frustration from the fans is very, very, very big. Uh, we are talking also about the beginning of a stage with Fernando Diniz. Uh, we're talking about the expectation of the rival of Carlo Ancelotti. Uh, so there are many, many things around this Brazilian team right now. And many, many things to get to. But first, there is that game coming up against Uruguay in Montevideo. Are the fans and the Brazilian team worried about this, considering what happened in the last game? Yes, yes, yes. People are a little bit concerned about what can happen in Uruguay. But as I told you, uh, the, the, a draw against Venezuela. Brazil uh, also draw with Venezuela in the, the last world, the last Copa America that Brazil won. It, it, this is not the first time. We have also to respect Venezuela, we have to understand that the international level of football is it's much more uh, in the same level nowadays. So it can happen. But of course, for the fans, it was uh, almost a disaster. But as I said, Fernando Diniz is at the beginning of his job now. Uh, there are many things around that. The match against Uruguay, Brazil will have some change. Gabriel Jesus will probably play as center forward. Richardson will leave the team. Brazil also has some problems at both fullbacks. Fernando Diniz lost his four fullbacks that he chose for this for this match, some injured, some others not. But Brazil has some problems. But I think that Brazil against Uruguay uh, can play much better because uh, playing in Uruguay against Uruguay, Brazil will probably have also some more space to play. Uh, in, uh, because against Venezuela, you have to understand that Venezuela made their game like the, their 4 4 2 formation, very close, defending a lot. When they had to attack, they created some opportunities. Brazil lost many opportunities. Brazil should have scored the second goal, but they didn't. They did it because we still don't have the ideal chemistry between these players with Fernando Diniz. The way that Brazil is playing now with Fernando Diniz is different from the style that Brazil had with Tite. And I can quote many things here, like the way that the that the fullbacks play is completely different. That the way that Brazil creates uh, from the from his from its own box, it's completely different. So the chemistry uh, between these players with Fernando Diniz is not the ideal. So as I said, it's the beginning of Fernando Diniz with the Brazilian team. Well, let's see what happened with Uruguay. But I'm sure that Brazil can make a, a brilliant game against Uruguay and and get a get a win. 
Let's hear what Rodrigo had to say on Neymar, saying that he is still the main man in this side. He said it doesn't change anything if Neymar is 31 or not. He continues with the same quality as always. He remains our main player. Of course, when we lose or draw a game, the responsibility will be greater on him. But when we win, it becomes clear that he is our best player and we depend a lot on him. Ale. Well, further in this quote, then Rodrigo refers to Neymar as a hero to him, as an example to him. So w what else is he going to say? <laughs> it's time to move away from Neymar. It's time, to, it's time to let Vinicius and myself be the main attacking players and give us the ball and let us be the creative source. He's not going to say that either. And so Neymar is a talented, talented, talented player. Yeah. And for the longest time, he could have and should have been the next man up once Messi and Ronaldo were no longer in, 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 in the main sort of stage that Neymar was going to be that next guy. And whatever the circumstances have been, he hasn't taken on that role and that responsibility. My contention with Neymar, with Brazil, he is given all the freedom, all the freedom to do whatever he wants on the field, whether that's Tiche or Fernando Diniz. That hasn't changed. The role of Neymar hasn't changed. Still has freedom to get on the ball whenever he wants to, wherever he wants to on the field. If he's going to have that freedom, then that brings on with it the responsibility to create chances, to create opportunities, to find penetrating passes, to take on players, to have an impact on the game and finish chances that either he creates for himself or for others. And he did do that against Venezuela. Now, let me just apologize one second. Let me apologize to Gustavo Hoffman. <laughs> Any time that Venezuela gets a result against any country in South America, that's it. Game over. Controversy everywhere. Nobody's happy. <laughs> Paraguay lost to Venezuela. They fired their coach. Brazil ties against Venezuela, and now we got to change everything that we're doing. The truth of the matter is that Neymar still has a lot of freedom to create and impact the game. And when he doesn't, then you have to call him out. You have to bring it to the attention of Neymar himself, and that's what I would do if I were Fernando Diniz. I said, look, I don't mind you having all this freedom, but I need you to be dangerous over there. Don't come and get the ball from the center backs. Don't come and get the ball from the defensive midfielders. Go and get the ball over there where you are most impactful, where you're most dangerous. Go and play your best position, your best positions in the final third, not over here hanging out with the center backs. I just love it that Ali himself is saying it's rock bottom if Venezuela <laughs> yeah. managed to well, get apparently. or anything <laughs> of you. But Gustavo, to that point, talking about the fans being frustrated with Neymar and what we saw with the popcorn incident, is that an isolated incident? Is that a one-off or is it a bigger picture of the fans' frustration with the player? I think that it is a... It's, it's tough to say, but I think that is a big picture of uh, the relation with Neymar because as, as Alice, Ale has just said, when you have a player like Neymar, you always expect from him that he win the games for Brazil, especially when he has this freedom uh, as he had with Titi, as he's having now with Fernando Diniz. Uh, when you have Rodrigo saying that, oh, he remains our main player. So let's see what Neymar can do. Let's see Neymar winning games for Brazil. So the relation is, is, a, a, little, is a little bit complicated between the fans and Neymar. We still have uh, millions of fans who love Neymar, but we also have many, many fans who don't like Neymar nowadays. That's, that's the truth. So, but, but I think that the most important thing here is the result. The result of the Brazilian national team. The, the fans of Brazil also, they, they go up and down <laughs> from one game to the other. So if Brazil wins now against you, well, I can say what about what happened after the match against Bolivia. The fans were, were like, come on, we don't need any more Carlo Ancelotti. Keep him at Real Madrid. Let's go with Fernando Diniz. And now the fans are saying, Carlo, please come here fast. We need you. <laughs> you see, you, you understand? The fans, the yeah. fans are like this. So, uh, but with Neymar, yes, it's a, that's a, a complicated relationship with many, many fans.